What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Twin Motion update video for you today. So in today's video, I'm super excited to announce the newest version of Twin Motion has come out, version 2021.1. And with it comes a lot of features that we've been waiting for. Um, I think they're really exciting and I wanted to kind of make a video talking through them. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a blog post from Unreal Engine that talks about all of the new features contained inside of Twin Motion 2021.1. I will link to that in the notes down below, as well as the release notes page, which really talks through everything in more detail. It'll show you exactly what they changed. But um, let's go ahead and take a run through this. So super excited about this. So the first feature that they have in here, that is a feature that everyone's been waiting for. It's been in beta, but it's been officially released, is the bridge to Unreal Engine. And so what that's going to do is that's going to give you a plugin for Unreal Engine that lets you bring in your twin motion projects. I, I got this question a lot. Why is that a big deal? The big deal is because while twin motion is a great tool, so it's really great for creating good looking renderings and everything else, just like most rendering programs, it's a little bit limited in the sense that there's only so much you can do. So Unreal Engine is one of the world leaders in both high quality graphics and rendering, as well as actually being an engine that gives you more control over everything. So it actually has like scripting in the back background so you can make things first off with more effects so there's more lighting effects and other things that you can do, but it also gives you the ability to start building out other options. So um, an example they gave is once it's in Unreal Engine, you could use the Variant Manager in order to create different options for different looks, right? So you could have this turn on and off with a button, what this might look like as a gym or as a yoga studio. So that's just an example, but it gives you more control to do things like that. So I'm super excited about this function. So far, they haven't released any tutorial content about this. I'm waiting on that um, in order to get into this a little bit more. I assume that there's a plugin in the Unreal Engine store that you download, but I haven't had a chance to go look for it yet. So more on this in the future. Super excited about it. Um, definitely would give us all a reason to learn more about how to use Unreal Engine. So super excited about that. Um, so the Presenter Cloud I haven't really had a chance to test this one either, but what the Presenter Cloud does is it gives you the ability to share your projects in the cloud rather than having to send a standalone file. So what this does is this basically allows you to export this to the cloud and then your users can actually fly through your rendering um, without them ever having to download a file. So really excited about this one. I think that the export button for this is under your names. So you open Presenter Cloud in order to do that. Like I said, haven't had a chance to do that yet. There's also a button for Push to Cloud, which we're gonna give a try to in the future. Um, one thing to note about this one is it's being rolled out progressively, meaning that um, it's currently only available for commercial licensees. They're gonna roll it out to everyone else in the future, but note that this one is considered early access. So between the Unreal Engine plugin and the Mega Scans, those are the two that I'm really excited about. So now you can access Quixel Mega Scans files directly inside of Twin Motion. You can do that by going to your asset browser over here, clicking on the button for Quixel Mega Scans. The cool thing is you've got access both to 3D assets. So if I was to zoom in here, for example, you can see how there's different assets in here that you can look at and bring in, as well as the surfaces or the materials contained inside of Quixel Mega Scans. So that's gonna give you access to a huge library of things that you can use in your renderings. And so we can talk about those a little bit more in the future, but let's take a look at an example. So for example, right now, this rock file is a file that I've brought in from Quixel Mega Scans. And so you would find that by going to the 3D asset section. And under this one, for example, we would go under nature. We would go under rock boulder. And so notice how this one is in my library, meaning I can click, I can drag it over, and I can place it in my model, right? So I'm gonna drag it over here and place it. So it's something that's already been downloaded and I can use. Now these other models live in the cloud, right? And what you need to do is you need to click on the button here to download them in order to bring them into your local library. So my understanding is these are getting brought in as the 2K resolution. So they're not being brought in as the ultra high resolution models, but I mean, just looking at them, I think that they look really good. But notice how this is now downloaded. Well now, I can just drag it into my model. So the first time you do this, it's going to process data having to do with this object. So it's gonna tie it all together into an object that Twin Motion can use. So that's gonna take a second, but then 
once you've done that, you can drag this in whenever, right? So I can drag it in over and over and over again. So once you download them from the cloud, you can use them in your models. So there's a lot of cool examples of this. So this one, for example, is a wall model that I brought in and it's actually like a modular kit, right? So if you go into your 3D assets, buildings combined, there's different kits in here for different roofs, um, different gables, different floors that you can use in order to create full buildings like this for your renderings. So a lot of cool stuff in that Megascans library. Seriously recommend just kind of playing around with it and checking it out to see what's in there to download. All right, so there's a bunch of other features that are in here as well. So there's now Datasmith direct link functionality. What that means is that means you can bring in data from multiple different places. So currently support's been added for Revit, which means that you could bring in multiple different Revit files. So like landscape plans, um, architectural plans, structural plans, things like that aggregate them all together. I have not had a chance to test this. I'm not doing a lot with Revit on my channels right now, but having the ability to bring everything in from multiple different consultants could be extremely useful. Um, for example, if you're trying to create like a phasing diagram with your structure or something like that. So interested to see what people are gonna be able to do with this one. It really kind of shows a target towards professionals in this case that are collaborating together. So they've also expanded their asset library, which I love asset library expansions just because they allow softwares to really, really kind of reach new audiences. So in this case, for example, they've brought in 20 new trees. Um, vegetation assets are always great, as well as some uh, human, some posed human assets and a gym library of gym equipment. So being able to add gym equipment to your renderings. So I'm sure we'll see more of that in the future. One thing I do wish we saw a little bit more of, and this is more of a Quixel thing than anything, is Quixel's assets usually tend to be more stylized meaning you get like the damaged brick walls and the 3D assets are a lot of the time either like outside rocks or like burnt logs, things that kind of fit for games. I do hope in the future we start seeing some more architectural style stuff from Quixel. So things like furniture and other things like that, trees, like full on trees. So they do have some nature assets but it would be nice in the future to see something that's more than trunks. Um, that's kind of like high quality nature assets. Cause I think that's something that's missing um, out there in the 3d space right now. But for right now, I do like the assets that they are adding. So they've also made some different changes to their lighting. So they're more internal changes, but those have been made to kind of make that look better. So they've also adjusted auto exposure and bloom. So that's going to make our renderings look a lot better. So kind of an under the hood change, but, always happy to see that come across because it's going to help you with your results. So the non-realistic rendering styles is pretty cool as well. So this is something where you can add a style to your view rather than doing the photorealistic rendering. And so you can access that inside of your view over here. And I think you need to go to full screen view first. So you can click in here to go to that full screen view. But if you click on the eye right here, you can adjust the rendering to shaded outline, to more of a plaster look, to a wood look, um, a lot of different things in here, a foam look. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to kind of render these out more stylized. So for me, my favorite is the flat outline. So I think that looks really cool with like this wall, for example. So being able to show this in a hand-drawn or less detailed style, I think is better for kind of communicating um, that something isn't complete and more that it's kind of diagrammatic in nature. So this is a cool feature as well. So it now supports phasing in those presenter files. So those files that you share, you could use this in order to communicate things like your construction sequencing and how things are gonna to come together in that way. So, um, so not only can you show final renderings, you can also show that phasing. I haven't had a chance to test this. I'm assuming that ties into the scheduling piece, which is released in the last version. So, um, so that one's gonna be kind of interesting to play around with. It is a great collaboration tool. So they've added the ability to tint the vegetation. So let's say for example, and we're gonna drop out of this full screen view. Let's say for example, that you wanted to adjust the tint of the leaves or the bark on the tree. There's options in here that are gonna allow you to do that. So you can adjust how green something is, how tinted this is. So it gives you a lot of fine control over the way those things are going to look. 
so you could adjust same thing with the bark right with the different colors I mean obviously you don't want to go too far but it does allow you to make that kind of fine adjustment that can take that from looking gray to looking like more of a brown um, in order to get the result that you're looking for so UI UX improvements you can see those a little bit so for example they've added this navigation header to the top of the page um, so they have changed the way things look a little bit I don't think they're massive changes but they do kind of affect the overall feel of the program notice that you can turn this off by going to the gear right here and clicking hide navigation panel you can turn it back on by going into your view settings and just clicking on navigation and clicking show navigation and so there's also been some performance and enhancements I've not had a chance to test this to see if it's any more stable than it was before I think they talk a little bit more about that in the actual detailed release notes so you can go check that out for yourself all right so that's from an in this video leave a comment below let me know what you think about the new features if you've tried them yet I just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video thanks guys